somewhere in a star system far away there are planets that orbit a yellow star in harmony, or do they? Everything with mass exerts a gravitational pull on every other thing that has mass. Depending on the conditions, a system with many planets can become chaotic and unstable due to the multitude of these interactions. The forces that a planet like Kerbin would experience would be something like this. And that is just what Kerbin experiences. You can imagine that determining the exact orbits of a system like this would turn out to be rather complicated. So the developers of KSP decided to set the orbits of the planets in stone. Treat every planet and moon as a two-body system with the body that it is orbiting. Meaning that Kerbin pretends that the only object exerting a gravitational pull on it is Kerbal, and the Mun acts as if Kerbin is the only object pulling on it, and etc. So this simplifies interactions by a lot. But is it accurate? Well, as mentioned before, doing the real calculations by hand is pretty much impossible. But what if we let a computer do the work? I actually found a script on the internet that allows you to simulate the movement of celestial objects due to gravity, and with a few alterations I could simulate the entire Kerbola system. Except for Eve, because for some reason when I ran the script with Eve, it just didn't work. And as it turns out, the Corbola system is relatively stable to my surprise. Note that I didn't include inclination of the planets and their apoapses are all pointed in the same direction, so this is not entirely accurate. Well, all the planets seem to be far away enough that these inaccuracies do not really matter. Except for Jewel and Elu, maybe. If you just look at Jewel and Elu and add in inclination and the argument of periapsis, we will be able to see if even they form a stable orbit around Kerbal. And as it turns out, the answer is yes. At least for as long as I ran the code, they seem to keep their orbits roughly the same. So the Kerbola system as a whole seems to be fine. But what if we look at a system like Duna and Ike? So let's see what happens when we simulate these two bodies. Well, as I expected, the two bodies orbit a common center of mass that is located right here. So Duna should move about a little bit if this were real. This is all fine and dandy, but what about the Jewel system and its moons? That looks quite unstable, doesn't it? Well, I simulated the whole system and this is what we get. It doesn't take long before Val gets a boost from Tylo and it gets its apoapsis raised quite a bit. And as Val passed Tylo every so often, the orbit changes again. But then I had to wait quite a bit before something happened again. After a while, Val came very close to Tylo again, so close even, that it got slingshotted out of the system entirely. The rest of the moons roughly kept their orbit, but as you might have noticed, all the orbits are shifted in this direction. And this is explained due to the fact that I didn't give Jewel any momentum at the start. Thus the moons give a total angular momentum in that direction, moving the entire system. But that is not really important because we are looking at the bigger changes in the orbits as we saw earlier. So to conclude, the orbits in KSP are accurate enough with the exception of the Joule system. Of course in the end this doesn't really matter because the Joule system is just very cool. If you have any other ideas for future video topics be sure to post them down below because I can always use some inspiration. This video was inspired by some people who asked about orbits of some of the planets. And so I made this video. That's it for now, see you next time.